In this video, we're going to focus on the acid catalyzed dehydration reactions of alcohols. We're going to focus on the mechanisms which can help us to predict the product of the reaction. So when you mix an alcohol with sulfuric acid and heat, an E1 reaction can occur, converting the alcohol into an alkene. So let's go over the mechanism. First, I'm going to rewrite sulfuric acid like this. Step one is protonation. The OH group is a bad leaving group, but once you add a hydrogen to it, it becomes a much better leaving group. And the presence of heat will facilitate the escape of the leaving group. So now what we have here is a secondary carbocation intermediate. In the next step, a base is going to come in and abstract a proton. Let me change the color of one of the protons. Now the base that we could use can be water or it could be the bisulfate ion. It really does depend on the relative concentration of water and sulfuric acid. We don't know what the concentration of the solution is. So whichever base is close by, it can abstract a proton. But understand that water is a stronger base than bisulfate. So if the concentration of water is significant, it can definitely abstract a proton. So we're going to use water as the base in this video. But understand, sometimes it could be bisulfate if you have a very, very concentrated solution of sulfuric acid. So water is going to abstract a proton, and we're going to form a double bond. So that will lead to one possible answer. Now water can also abstract the other proton adjacent to the carbocation intermediate, giving us a different product. And so we can get either one pentene or two pentene, but two pentene is going to be the major product. This is the minor product. The major product is known as the Zeta product. The minor product is the Hoffman product. Now, keep in mind, you can get both the E isomer and the Z isomer. So just, I want to mention that as well. Now, let's work on another example. If you want to pause the video and work on this problem, feel free to do so. Go ahead and predict the major product of this reaction. So like before, the first step is going to be protonation of the alcohol functional group. In the next step, the leaving group is going to leave. Now, notice that we have a secondary carbocation intermediate. The plus charge is on a carbon that's attached to two other carbons. So that makes it a secondary carbocation. But that plus charge is, ad is a adjacent to a tertiary carbon. And when you see that, a hydride shift will occur. Now the driving force for the hydride shift is carbocation stability. A tertiary carbon, or rather a tertiary carbocation, is more stable than a secondary carbocation. So here's the hydrogen now. So now at this point, this tertiary carbocation is going to determine where we can get the double bond. So we can remove hydrogen 1, a base can remove hydrogen 2, or it can abstract hydrogen 3. So if the base abstracts proton 3, the double bond will form in this vicinity, giving us this product. Now, let me put that in green. If the base abstracts proton 2, we can get this product. And if the base abstracts proton 1, we can get this product. So which of these three alkenes is the major product? What would you say? A double bond with four R groups is going to be a more stable alkene than one with three R groups. And that's going to be more stable than one with two R groups. 
So if we look at the, the double bond highlighted in blue, and we focus on the two carbon atoms that are part of the double bond, how many other carbon atoms are attached to those two double bonded carbon atoms? For this one, there's only two. So it has two R groups. For this one here, on the right, these are the two double bonded carbon atoms. And there's three other carbon atoms attached to it. So it has three R groups. And for this one, there's four carbon atoms that are attached to the two double bonded carbon atoms. So it has four R groups. So this is what is known as a tetra substituted alkene. It's going to be the major product because it's the most stable alkene that we can form. So remember, when taking a test, and when you're dealing with an E1 acid catalyzed dehydration reaction of alcohols with like sulfuric acid, the major product is typically the most stable alkene product that can be formed in this reaction. So you wanna look for the alkene that's highly substituted, particularly an internal alkene as opposed to a terminal alkene. Now from this point forward, we're just gonna focus on drawing the major product and writing the mechanism to get there. So feel free to work on this example. So as always, step one is protonation. Step two is the leaving group leaves. So right now we have a secondary carbocation intermediate. Now, note that the carbocation is adjacent to a quaternary carbon with two methyl groups attached to it. So what's going to happen is instead of getting a hydride shift, we're going to get a methyl shift. So the actual carbon structure will change. Now, because the methyl moved towards this carbon, that carbon no longer has a positive charge. But the carbon that lost the methyl group, it now carries a positive charge. So we went from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. So now at this point, we can get the different products in this reaction relative to the carbocation. So we can abstract proton 1 and form a double bond here, or we can abstract proton 2 and form a double bond here, or we can abstract proton 3, giving us a double bond here. Which proton will lead to the most stable alkene. If we put a double bond here, this will be a di-substituted alkene. If we were to put a double bond here, this would be a tri-substituted alkene. And if we were to put a double bond here, this would be a tetra-substituted alkene. So therefore, the base will preferentially abstract proton 3. because by doing so, we're gonna get the most stable alkene in this reaction. So this is gonna be the final product, the final major product of this reaction. Now let's work on this example. So here we have an OH group attached to a carbon structure that contains a ring. When you see this, you need to watch out for ring expansions. So as always, the first step is protonation, followed by the escape of the leaving group. When the leaving group leaves, we're gonna get a secondary 
carbocation intermediate. Now let's see what's going to happen here because this secondary carbocation intermediate is adjacent, I mean adjacent rather, to a tertiary carbon. So a hydride shift can occur. If the hydride shift occurs, the plus charge will move here. And we'll simply have a five carbon ring with a tertiary carbocation. However, that's not the most stable rearrangement that we can make because the ring can expand and still yield a tertiary carbocation. A six carbon ring is more stable than a five carbon ring. Thus, stability is the driving force for carbocation rearrangements. A carbocation will rearrange to find the most stable configuration possible. Now let's number these carbons accordingly. The bond between carbons two and six will break and the electrons in that bond will be used to connect carbon one and carbon six. Thus the structure that we're going to obtain will look like this. So this is carbon one. This is going to be carbon two, three, four, five, and six. So six is now attached to carbon one and we still have the methyl group attached to carbon one. The question is, where is the positive charge? Carbon two and six lost the bond and one and six, there was a bond that formed between those two. So two lost the bond, but didn't regenerate it. Therefore, the plus charge is on carbon two. Now, right now we have a secondary carbocation, but a hydride shift will occur to give us a more stable tertiary carbocation. So after the hydride shift, the plus charge is now on a tertiary carbocation, which means we could form a double bond here, here, or here. This will give us a disubstituted alkene and putting it here or here doesn't matter. So we, we can just pick one of them because of the symmetry. So the base is going to abstract a proton, form a pi bond, and that's it. So the final product that we're going to get, let's see if I can fit it here, is going to look like this. So that's the major product of this reaction. Now let's work on this example, where we have a molecule with two alcohol functional groups. So what's going to happen in this reaction? So we have a primary alcohol and we have a secondary alcohol. Which one will be protonated? The fact is both can be protonated, but the mechanism by which the reaction will work will be adjusted. So let's focus on protonating the secondary alcohol first. So it's going to become a good leaving group. And when it leaves, it's going to leave behind a secondary carbocation. Now at this point, we could form an alkene if we abstract a nearby proton, but the oxygen, it's going to be attracted to the partial, I mean, to the positively charged carbocation because oxygen has a partial negative charge. And that electrostatic attraction is going to pull the oxygen towards that carbocation. And thus we're going to get an intramolecular reaction. Let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to get a six membered ring with oxygen being part of that ring. This is going to be number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we still have the methyl group on six. And the last thing we need to do is remove the hydrogen on the oxygen. And so we could use water to do that. Thus, for this particular reaction, instead of getting an, an elimination reaction, we can get a cyclic ether. So this is more of an SN1 reaction. The leaving group leaves, we get a, a secondary carbocation, and then the nucleophile attacks the secondary carbocation, giving us the product. Now let's focus on protonating 
the primary alcohol as opposed to the secondary alcohol. And let's see how the mechanism is going to change. Now, the leaving group won't just leave on its own because if it does so, it's going to leave behind an unstable primary carbocation intermediate. Primary substrates don't favor an S1 reaction. So this is not going to it's not going to be the, the most likely scenario to occur. Instead, the oxygen will act as a nucleophile and attack the primary carbon, which is highly accessible, kicking out the leaving group. And so this reaction resembles an intramolecular SN2 reaction. This is going to be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're still going to get a cyclic ether but it's going to look a little different. So let's call this one. Let's call this, uh, well, I guess we can call this two if we just count it the other way. And in actuality, it looks the same because of the symmetry of the molecule. But if there was one additional method group somewhere on carbons three, four, five, then the products would be different. But due to symmetry, it turns out that they will be the same. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to remove the hydrogen. So for this particular example, we get the same cyclic ether. So that's it for this video. So now you know what happens when an alcohol reacts with sulfuric acid.